In this video, I'm going to explain how the packet behaves in the firewall. The same process will be same as for any vendor firewall with a little bit of change. This is our firewall connected to the rotor and the rotor is connected to the outside world. The circled area is our trust zone and the uncircled area is untrust zone. Let us suppose there was a web server connected to the switch. This is the switch and there is a nice application running on that server. One of user from our van needs to connect to that web server. How we will come? Suppose this is the user and he need to connect to 1.1.1.1. The server IP 1.1.1.1 is binded to the URL xyz.com. So all the DNS servers had updated information of xyz.com which is pointed to 1.1.1.1 and all the ISPs knows the route to 1.1.1.1 through the great protocol BGP. The user opens the web browser and type xyz.com. The system didn't understand the letters the user typed and tried to resolve the URL with a genuine IP address. First it checks in the local cache, is there any IP address pointed to this URL? If it fails to resolve in the cache, the system sends the request to the ISP DNS servers as a DNS packet with port number 53. Luckily, if the DNS server had an IP address in the cache for a given URL, it replies back to the user with the IP address 1.1.1.1. .1 if not, it sends to the global DNS server. And the global DNS server replies with the IP address 1.1.1.1. .1. Let us assume the system IP address is 2.2.2.2. And the system knows the IP address for the URL xyz.com which is 1.1.1.1. .1 and the TCP IP stack starts to form the packet like this. It is an HTTP request. So the payload contains the get request in the layer 7. And in the transport layer, a random number was selected as a source port. Here it is taken 12345 and the destination port it is selected 80 as a HTTP request. In the network layer, the source and destination IP address are noted with source IP 2.2.2.2 .2 and the destination IP is 1.1.1.1 .1 and it checks for the root 1.1.1.1 .1 in the local routing table. As we all know, it didn't find the root, So it will send it to the default gateway, which is the edge rotor. Here it is the edge rotor. CU means customer edge. To send it to the edge rotor, it needs to know the MAC address of the edge rotor and it is written that MAC address in the L2 data link packet as a source MAC, the system MAC. Here the system MAC is a, a w -A -W -A. and the destination MAC will be B B B B or something as an example okay and it send the overall frame to the physical layer here physical one the frame travel in through this link this is done in ethernet link or something okay now we come to the edge rotor okay the edge rotor receives the packet and find his own mac as the destination mac in the data link layer so it parses the packet and checks whether the root is available in his routing table for the destination ip 1.1.1.1 .1 if it find or not it sent to the isp rotor isp rotor sends it to our organization because of bgp table running on that rotor which redirects 1.1.1.1 network to our organization now the packet came to my rotor and it forwards to the firewall van port this is the van port and this is the firewall LAN port or this is the untrust zone and this is this is the trust zone because the 1.1.1.1 route is behind the firewall so it sends to the firewall now the actual story begins Okay, now the packet is passed all the tests and stay alive. Now the firewall will accept other chunks of data. These are all the fragmented packets and start reassembles using the defragmented process. The firewall will start reassemble using the defragmented process. At this stage, a fragment may be discharged due to overlapping attack. It is also called as teardrop attack. Teardrop or overlapping attack. What it means? See, the firewall will check the sequence numbers like 1, after that it will check, check check for another sequence number 2 and it puts in the order the all the chunks of data in the last it shows that the 5 is duplicated and it comes 2 times so the firewall will treat this is an overlapping 
packet and it, it discards the packet and also firewall will discard the packet if there if the maximum packet threshold reached in the firewall buffer memory see in the buffer memory the defragmented process have to be some memory was allocated if the memory was full the firewall will discard the remaining packets now the firewall performs a flow lookup and the packet a firewall session consists of two unidirectional flows each uniquely identified you have to understand the difference between the flow session connection and socket first to understand the further step the combination of ip address plus port is called socket the flow is nothing but the packet traveling from one source to one destination for example this is the source and this is the destination the, this is the one directional flow is called the flow from one source to one destination the connection is nothing but it is a bidirectional flow see if there is two flows then it is called a connection the combination of connections from one source to one destination is called a session let us take you are connected to one web server with a port 80 and you open one brow one browser and connected to the web web server so your source port is 1234 and destination port 80 source address is your pc and destination address is web server ip next you open another web browser and you type the same server same url now your source port is changed to 1235 but the destination port is same as 80 so this is also a session it is also coming to the single session by this the firewall tries to identify the flow using a six tuple key six tuple key means that it is a combination of source port plus destination port source ip and destination ip one two three four and the source zone where the packet is coming from and also the protocol number with the help of these six the firewall will try to look up the flow by using this six tuple key T -U -P -L -E, tuple key the firewall stores these active flows in the flow lookup table the firewall maintains one flow lookup table and it, st it stores all these flows in that the firewall extracts the six tuple flow key from the packet and then performs a flow lookup to match the packet with an existing flow each flow has a client and server component where the client is the center of the first packet of the session from the firewall perspective and the server is the receiver of the first packet this is all from the firewall point of view so firewall maintained two lookups c2s and s2c c2s means client to server and s2s means server to client this is all from firewall point of view when the session is generating from outside it is client to server when the session is generating from inside it is server to client now think this is the first packet and there was no existing sessions matches this packet so the firewall needs to set up a session for this flow to set up the firewall session the firewall performs the zone protection profile and also TCP state check TCP state check is included in the zone protection profile as a sin flood protection zone protection profiles helps to block and detect DOS and flood attacks after the packet service on the firewall the ingress interface information is used to determine whether any zone protection profiles exist for the zone the packet is subject to evaluation based on the profile configuration in TCP state check if the first packet is a sin packet if the first packet is not a sin packet then the firewall will discuss the packet because in the tcp state the first packet must be sin then the server replies sin act after that acknowledgement will come there are two options in the tcp state check one is red and another is sin cookie red stands for random early detection after the several threshold limit reached the sin packets 
the firewall will simply drop the packets in packets to protect from the DOS attacks. This is also impact the legitimate traffic also. So red is more dangerous than the synco key. But the firewall default behavior is always red random early detection. When you put the option the red is bypassed with the sin cookie then the then the firewall will behaves like a proxy for the tcp state checks and when the sin packet comes to the firewall it sends to the server a new sin and again server replies synac the firewall put one sequence number for this for example 10 and it sends to the client when the client reply with the act the firewall check is the 10 is that acknowledgement acknowledgement packet when it is matched then the firewall will send it to the ser server otherwise the firewall will discuss the packet this is sin cookie sin cookie is nothing but the cookie it inserts one cookie for the sin packets and it tracks the sins by this the, the most important benefit is it don't drop the legitimate traffic you can configure the firewall to allow the first TCP packet even if it does not have a sin bit set. Altering the default behavior may be a security risk by opening up the firewall to a malicious packet, not part of a valid TCP connection sequence. Although this is not a recommended setting, it might be required for scenarios like asymmetric flows. For example, in your network, there is a there is an asymmetric routing is going on in your network. Let us take an example. There are two firewalls which is in which are in active active condition. The first packet is coming through this firewall and the return packet is going through this firewall and this, in this condition it is better to enable tcp state check with a non sin packet by this the packet completes its ingress stage and enters into the forwarding stage where all the security profiles policies net lookups and the application identification comes into the play we will discuss the forwarding stage in the next video thank you for watching this